a flight at dawn, a tunnel at sunset, Brussels, an Italian artist's journey to the city symbol of Europe, fueled by his ambition to travel through that narrow tunnel leading to artistic consecration at the end of his life. In the cradle of Belgian culture, in Hortas and Magritte's native lands, Bovino can find the roots of his painting in surreal evocation, as well as in the pure musicality of arabesque, looking for a new kind of abstraction, a neo-purism to comfort contemporary men. Mala tempora currunt, warned the great Latin orator. Today, Brussels is a wounded city, but apart from the noise of the traffic, nothing can really spoil the charm of its buildings or gardens. Art, a great soother, is very alive in all its variety. It lives not only in historical buildings, in great museums or monuments, but also in the people now offering everything and the opposite of everything during contemporary art exhibitions. And if old negative categories like conceptual absurdity, vulgarity, kitsch, surreality, quotations, anachronism and plagiarism often declare themselves as values, it's up to us to choose what is vital for us in symbolic mass communication. Meanwhile, young men and women are ready to crowd public premises and squares in order to assert their right to joy against any absurd barbarism. <laughs> In September 2016, the heart of the Belgian capital was home to an important edition of the Accessible Art Fair. Curator Stephanie Manasset collected works by 70 eminent artists from all around the world. The location chosen was that glorious temple of memory, the Jewish Museum, where in 2014 a terrorist attack was carried out and four people were killed. Um, so my name is Stephanie Manasseh, I created this concept, Accessible Art Fair, ten years ago. The reason why it's called Accessible is, just like I said, to make these artists accessible to you. So we hope that you enjoy your evening very much. We're here all weekend, so you have a chance to see four floors of art on this side, and two floors of art on that side, so 75 artists in total. To this day, Soldiers are patrolling our streets and are guarding potential hotspots at... During the inauguration of any art fair, one can often be much more captivated by the visitors' variety, their clothes and faces and colours, than by the power of the works on show. Figures move and overlap quickly, clinking their glasses. Some chat might creep in and bursts of laughter might be heard. But an esthete desires empty and silent spaces in order to immerse oneself in art.
In the vortex of worldliness and in the confusing kaleidoscope of aesthetic manifestations, you can sometimes hear the rare breath of poetry, even when you're trying to represent the agony and ugliness of the present. At the Jewish Museum, the constant presence of armed guards did not prevent a steady stream of public, ensuring profitable exchanges between collectors and exhibitors without the mediation of art dealers. From this point of view, in contrast to other important autumn art fairs such as Art Forum in Berlin, Fries Art Fair in London, Art Cologne and Artissima in Turin. Mr. Bovino, a 46-year-old artist from Turin, Italy, whose background includes not only art, but also musicology, wrote an essay on aesthetics with the emblematic title The Limits of Arts According to the Effect. Active in the field of painting and graphics, Bovino also excels in video art, winning the first prize at Civitavecchia Film Festival in 2006. Anyway, in an event showcasing such a variety of techniques and trends, where fashion and the ephemeral can sometimes prevail over the most genuine expressions of the soul, Bovino's work surely was one of the most rigorous and austere. His five important graphic works dating back to the 90s and shown at the fair represent his three artistic themes, musical abstractions, female nudes and transfigured landscapes. His ink on paper, titled Expansion, leads the viewer into a still virginal white space, whereas his charcoal, a two-way enigma, emphasizing the pure line without sacrificing chiaroscuro, suggests a Kubrick-style journey to a nebula. No less disturbing is Intimate Maelstrom, with its deluge of cuts pulling the viewer's gaze into a spiral-shaped eye. Wounds, dated 1994, belongs to his female nude theme, although it appears closer to abstract expressionism. His surreal landscape, entitled The Machine in Time, a sketch of a commission for a large canvas, was long in the making and best expresses Bovino's creativity.
His work is symptomatic of horror vacui, philosophically seen as a willingness to embrace every aesthetic form and as a metaphor for the existence of all possibilities. This is how interlocking gears may reflect human complexity, suggesting the existential anguish overcome in man when he faces a vast amount of possibilities and must choose. In his most recent works, Bovino has confronted chaos several times, seeking unity and necessity within material as varied as possible. In a recent interview, the artist stated he wanted to express, through the proliferation of forms, his obsessions, and especially that sense of helplessness, despair and frustration we feel when we realize that the infinity of our aspirations contradicts the limitations of our ability. For example, when the repetition of our work prevents us from new meetings, when we don't remember the content of a book anymore, even if we know we can never read every book when we would like to break the rhythm of our everyday life in order to contemplate a masterpiece and snatch its secret, thus taking possession of its arcane beauty. Too soon night fell over this wonderful scene in Brussels, where there was the possibility of combining variety with quality, lightness with profundity, leaving a direct link between the admirer and the architect, and introducing an artist who will never cease to amaze us. <laughs>